Welcome to my solar addiction. Today's video. Victron Links Distributor 1000 Amp Bus Bar. So today I want to do a quick unboxing and show you guys how I'm going to use the Victron distributor in my new setup to be able to switch between multiple different inverters between the EG4 18kPVs that are behind me and the two Solarx I already have that are running the house at the current moment. So I'm using actually two of these in my setup, but uh, I figured I'd do a quick unboxing and show you guys how I'm going to use this and give you my uh, impression of this wonderful bus bar that's very easy to use and solves quite a few problems for you. So it comes packaged in a simple box. When we open it up, we can see that we have this sticker, which I actually going to use both of them on, on stickers on both of mine because I'm going to have the units upside down and you want to have the little, it's got little holes through here so you can see the LEDs that are going to show up when we put the, the um, fuses in the distributor. I have the fuses to put in the distributor right here and I'll go over that in a second. And um, when you put this sticker on it, then it'll be, you could read the lettering right vertically and you can see that the lights would be lit up if the fuse is blown or if they're working properly as well as the ground in the middle. So you won't lose that. You also get a little manual, I guess. It's so simple, there's not much a quick install guide. Basically uh, telling you how to put the sticker on. <laughs> I think you can figure that out probably without the instructions. And then it also comes with this communication cable because you can hook daisy chain these together depending on what kind of configuration you have for your application. You may need more than one. Okay, so then it's, you can see it's packaged well. All right. Got a little foam inserts on the side just to keep it from bouncing around and shipping. And then it's bubble wrapped. So I'm going to take the box and ditch that. And there it is. The VIX distributor. Okay. So as you can see, I have it upside down. This would be right side up. You have your positive bus bar up here and your negative bus bar down here. And you connect through these ports right here. I'm going to take the cover off and show you what I'm talking about. But you'd have the negatives on the bottom. And then the corresponding positives would go into the top. And they have little spacers so that they don't come into contact with each other and you don't have any sparks or arcing or anything like that. But they're 1000 amp bus bars. And for systems like this, I would need that 1,000 amps just to be sure. I probably could get away with 600, but I like to have too much is better than not enough when we're talking about dealing with amperage overages or something like that. I don't want to cause a fire. So it's always better to err on the side of caution and have something rated to a higher amperage than what you need than something lower for sure, because that would be a problem. Get my trusty screwdriver out. Pull the cover off, and there we could see the inside. Like I said, we have these spacers here. This, these lugs, these terminals, would you'd put a fuse between these two terminals, connecting where the cable comes in from the battery, the positive, through the fuse, because you want to have a fused positive, and then to the positive bus bar. And then the same thing here here and as you go down okay and then you would put your negatives on the bottom terminals now these come off it's not a big deal to pull them off they'll snap right back in so I'm gonna pull them all off so we can see trash all right so there's our negative terminals here's our ground okay all right and if we would start probably with the negatives, we'd connect those from our, I have two sets of, of two watt coming from my six uh, EG4LL V2 batteries 
as well as the same thing from my Power Pro batteries. So I want to have the double two out, positive, negative, positive, negative, coming in here for one set of batteries to parallel them with the other set of batteries, okay? And I do the same thing with the L LV2s that I have, all right? So I've talked about these fuses. So I'm going to show you now because I have fuses for all of them. Now these are 200 amps, 48 volts, okay, 200 amp fuses, okay, and they're designed to work with this system. So let's go ahead and take one and put it on. And this is what our fuse looks like, okay. And it's got 200 amps written right on it on both sides. Okay, so let's put one on. And I'm going to loosen this one up too because I'm going to demonstrate how they stack in a second as well. So I've gone ahead and I've loosened up uh, all of the connections here and I'm going to show you how the cables would fit on there as well as how to put the fuses on. All right, uh, it's, it's kind of chilly here. I had to go put on my jacket. We had over about 10 inches of snow just the other day, so it's still cold here. Still got a lot of snow on the ground. All right, so... First, you would have to, if we're going to put our fuses in, we would put in our negative connection at the bottom, starting with the cable. Then we would go to a flat washer, a spring washer, and then a nut. Okay, let's do that that nut on there and we would because this is an M8 model different models have different torque settings but we would torque this down to 14 Newton meters based on what the manual says for an M8 if you have an M10 it would be either 17 Newton meters or 33 Newton meters depending on which serial number you had. But after you would install the negative connections at the bottom, you would want to do your positive connections after putting this spacer on there. Now you got these two little feet at the bottom and then this part at the top kind of has a little arc to it to match the cable that's coming in. And you'd put the feet underneath this little bar and then the other part goes over the top and it just snaps on there might want to try to center it first. There we go. And it's good to go. All right. Now, before we were to put our fuses on here, in the manual it says the center bolts should be torqued down to 10 Newton meters. And we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. Now, I've already done it, and I'm going to just show you that they're at that 10 Newton meters already by retorquing them not torquing torquing and this little guy off of here and here we go that's good that's good that's good and that's good. Now the rest of my torque settings are going to be 14 Newton meters. So I'm going to go ahead and change that right now. So I don't forget to do it later. And that's 14. All right. So now that we've got these tightened to 10 Newton meters, we're ready to put our fuse on. Let's go ahead and do one of these without this little positive connection for the circuit board here. But I put my fuse on there. I'm going to face it towards me here. 
because this is going to be down in my wiring trough. And then we would put, of course, if we had a cable, the cable would go on. But then we would go with our flat washer, our spring washer, our flat washer, and our spring washer. And then we would put a couple of nuts on there. Now this side is not going to be finished because I have to, you know, make the cable and run it through conduit and have the Victron Lynx distributor inside the wiring trough before I do anything like permanent connection. So, but this side will be staying permanently because I've got the fuse in there now and I'm going to torque it down to that 14 Newton meters and there she blows. So now in this one, what we want to do is we want to get our fuse want to put it on first then this red positive connection for our smart board here goes on next then a flat washer come on Dave getting a little overzealous flat washer spring washer and a nut and we would tighten that down once again to because of an M8, a 14 Newton meters, which I have this set for already. And here we go. That one's good to go. Now, if we were doing this permanent, we would then be putting our positive cable on top of there, like so. And we would get our flat washer our spring washer and our nut and we would tighten that down okay and it would be 14 Newton meters we're not going to do it because this is not permanent all right and then we're going to go ahead and finish these up for you real quick show you what that looks like once they're all in because I will be leaving these fuses in there flat washer spring washer nut this side flat washer spring washer and a nut and then over here flat washer spring washer I got another flat washer there it is flat washer spring washer and a nut well-built bus bar I'll have to see how this works out as far as actual live testing of it but it looks like it's a really well-built bus bar a little piece of dog fuzz and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down because those this sides gonna be permanent this is where the cable will come in over here so I don't need to play with this side anymore Tightened it down to 14 Newton meters per the specs. And then we would be done after we put in our little spacers here. So we don't lose those. Like I said, we'd have a negative and a positive here. A negative and then a positive here. Coming in from this side just like these are. Same thing in this position. All right. Now, this is not permanent, so I'm going to go ahead and take this loose so I can put the cover back on because I will need to put this into the wiring trough before I run my cables through conduit into the Victron Lynx distributor. Take that cable off. Put these back so they don't get lost. Let's get rid of this guy. Take this a loose. Get 
that out of there. And then we're going to go ahead and put this back so we don't lose it. And I forgot to mention this little terminal here. This is for your ground. So you put your run your ground wire in here too. So you have your grounded bus bar and everything should be happy in a nice little tight package. So it doesn't take up a lot of space. All right, looks like that's in there good. Let's go ahead and tighten this puppy up a little bit. I'm impressed with it. I think it's worth it. I know uh, it's kind of pricey, especially when you add in the, the fuses. But it's a nice compact package and it really can help you distribute power from more than one battery bank, collect power from more than one battery bank to one inverter, or distribute a battery bank to more than one inverter. It's good for either one of those functions. Um, I think it's worth every penny of it. So there'll be a link down in the description below. And um, if you click on that link and your order winds up going over 500 bucks, you'll get $50 off. So this one is going to come over here. And it'll be right in this position. And then these two cables are going to connect to the bus bars. And that goes all the way around over here to connect via these two to these connections here. And then we're splitting the two watts between the two 18Ks. You can see them coming in here. That's this run right here. And then this run right here is over here. We're sharing whatever battery banks are coming in through these cables here, which is going to be the three Power Pros and the rack of LLV2s are going to connect to this Lynx distributor. And then that Lynx distributor is going to connect to this one and share it between the two. 18Ks. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will be giving you an update on the Victron Lynx distributor, 1000 amp bus bar. Once I have everything set up and everything's running fine, I want to prove it with empirical data that it does work and function as advertised. Take care, guys. Hope you see you next time. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed our video.